If you're an indie game developer and your game has been failing in terms of wishlists, in terms of sales, or just general reception, the reason for it isn't bad marketing, unlike what a lot of people on the game dev reddits as well like to say, but it's actually just the fact that you're making a game that isn't good enough. Or at least that's a sentiment that has been going around the game dev YouTube sphere for the past few weeks, I think at this point, where the idea is if you look at like the top 1000 games on Steam, like indie games, all of them deserve to be there. None of them got there by pure luck. All of those games are there because they have an extremely high bar of the visuals, of the gameplay loop, of the sound design, of whatever really, they are exceptional in the kind of game they are. And none of those games are there because they just got completely lucky or they paid a big bag of money to some influencers and did like a big campaign, which gave them a lot of wish lists and visibility. And that's the only reason they're successful. And this idea got originally kind of kicked off by the developers of East Shade, which is a wildly successful indie game where they talk about the fact that, hey, Marketing is not the reason that your game fails. It's not understanding the market and not knowing what is the bare minimum in terms of quality and depth and whatever that you need to reach when making your game. And hey, I agree with that. With Forge Industry, which is the game we released, we did not reach the success we were hoping for. And sure, we can blame marketing on it, but that is definitely not the reason it failed. When I look at the other games in that automation genre, we were nowhere close in terms of visuals, in terms of UI, and in terms of general game feel. We had a pretty decent hook, which was, oh, it's like factorial, but there are no conveyor belts at all. Instead, we have like this spot finding system. That one was pretty solid. We were good there, but we just dropped the ball on everything else in terms of, like I said, the UI, the visuals aren't there. The gameplay loop was kind of frustrating at points and there was a lot of redundant actions. And all of that has led to, in the grand scheme of things, a pretty disappointing launch because we sold barely $10,000 gross off that game. Now, this is where I kind of wanted to make this video because the main vibe that I got with that East Stage video is if you're not capable of making top tier games, don't expect any success. And that's kind of where I got this feeling where a lot of very beginning developers, which is a big part of the people who watch our channel and that I interact with on a near daily basis through our Discord server, can feel discouraged because when you're starting to make those first games, you have no clue really how to even reach those top levels. So that's really what I wanted to talk about in this video, but I quickly still wanna dive in a little bit more into that point of your game is not even up to the market standard, basically. And that is something that with our second game, Songs of Evergate, which we ended up actually canceling, you can find more about that there, is we learned that if you're making a game that is subpar compared to like other games in the genre, you are doomed. And that's what it comes down to. Songs of Evergate was a roguelite set in Chinese mythology, but our visuals for a roguelite was pretty bad. Our game feel for a roguelite was horrible. This was the deciding factor that we just ended up canceling the game. And our hook as well wasn't as strong anymore. So when you take our game, Songs of Everjay, and you then compare it with some of the top games of the genre, either like the more Chinese mythology roguelites like Warm Snow, or like things like Soulstone Survivors, like actual great roguelites, we just had no chance in competing there. So that's the idea of, hey, if you can't make a quality ass product, you can't expect your game to be able to perform like a warm snow or be able to perform like any of those other roguelites. And sure, marketing also does play a big role in your game being a success. This is where, for example, you know, Among Us, when they first started, they had limited sales, but only once they actually had like people, streamers play their game, that's when the bigger audiences came. Now, you could say that, oh, they just got lucky. However, luck definitely plays a part in it, but the game was simply good as well. If tomorrow some like big shot YouTuber with like a million plus subscribers plays Forge Industry, and even if he says like, we just pay him like $10,000 to say that he loves the game, sure, we are going to get some sales from it, but it's not going to get that snowballing effect that something like Among Us or something else like Slay the Spire has, where, okay, some first people come and they're like, hey, actually, yeah, Forge Industry is an underrated gem. Let me tell other people about it. Let me also like make my own videos about it. That is where having that good game comes in. It's getting that snowball further rolling. You can get lucky and have Splattercat play your game, but if the game isn't good enough on its own, you will not get those conversions that you are looking for. And you will not be able to get that massive success that means that you can retire and never have to work a day in your life anymore. But this is where I have that problem because you can spend a lot of time 
looking up what is that quality bar that I need to reach. But you can't expect someone who is just starting game development, who's like trying to implement their first game in Unity and still figuring out how the engine works to reach that quality bar for the first time. There are plenty of games out there where people think, oh, they are like one hit wonders. Like the first game they made was already a banger. But in a lot of cases, that is not the case. It's just not as like visible. You need to look into it a little bit more. For example, games like We Were About To Die, which is like a gladiator roguelite, massively, massively successful. Like the guy, he doesn't really have to work if he doesn't want to anymore. And it's made by a solo developer, but that solo developer didn't just like luck his way into making that game. He was actually a game development teacher at one of the best game development schools in the world. So of course you can figure that, hey, he knows what he's doing when he's making that first game. He has had plenty of experience before. People like the East Shade Studio, for example, as well. They have previous AAA experience as environment artists. They didn't come into the indie world just as a hobby out of nowhere and then managed to make a game that was a first time banger. Similar things with Domekeeper. The Domekeeper devs, they made like 40 games before Domekeeper really was a success. That's another like great example I have. There's plenty of examples. Tiny Glade, which is another massively successful like wishlist wise based game, is developed by two ex-artists who worked at EA. So they also have a lot of background already and they're just venturing into indie for the first time now, but they're not first time game devs. A lot of people here and a lot of people who watch the, those game dev YouTube videos they are first time game devs. I know we have some of these people here like, I have been working as a triple A programmer or whatever for seven years. Sure, we have some of those, but most of the people here, they're average people who have never really gotten into game dev seriously. And that's really what I want to say here, that your first games will suck. I think another example, if we want to stick in the YouTube sphere is CodeMonkey. The guy is a great game developer. He knows what he's talking about in terms of game programming, in terms of game design but you can go to his Steam page and some of the first games he made, they have mixed reviews. They weren't immediate bangers. He also has some great games that are like very positive with a thousand plus reviews, but that's not the first game he made. You don't just luck yourself. It takes a lot of experience and it takes a lot of shitty games first to build up to that better quality game that you can actually reach that bar. But you can't expect to look and be like, okay, I have this game idea of like this specific genre. Then you do six months of research and analytics, figuring out what is the quality that you need to hit for your game to be a success, and then immediately go and make that game that is a success. That's not how game development works because game dev is pretty hard at the end of the day. And if you just spend half a year or however long, can be less, can be more, figuring out what is the optimal game going to be, but you've never actually touched an engine yet. You've never actually tried making 3D models yourself, you've never tried making an environment, you're going to run into issues and you will realize that, hey, I don't have the skills to reach this high bar yet. And you will probably feel like, is this all worth it? And my answer there is yes, it's worth it. It's just going to take more time than you think it's going to need. And you are going to have to make those shitty games first to build up the experience to make those higher quality games. So I think all of this comes down to me wanting to say the following. No, if this is the first game you're ever making, you will not be getting $100,000 of publisher funding with just a pitch deck and a good game idea. That's not how game development works. Similarly, you shouldn't just quit your job right now the moment you're starting to consider game development when you don't even know what is going on. And even if you have a year plus of runway, you'll realize very quickly that a year is often not enough to make a game let alone make a successful game because so many things will go wrong along the way. Game dev is much more of a journey than just coming in, making that mega success game and then immediately retiring and never having to work again. It's something that you need to build up slowly. So yes, you need to do market analysis. Yes, you do need to figure out if it is actually a smart IT to make another 2D platformer that is like using basic assets and whatever. Probably that's not going to be the move, but it is a good move if you're just wanting to figure out how does Unity work. And it's also a good move in learning that 2D platformers aren't the best genre to sell. There's a lot of people out there, surprisingly, who are very stubborn and who are like, no, I am certain that I'm going to make my 2D platformer a success. To those I say, go and make it, but don't spend too much time on it because it's going to be a great experience that, okay, if you feel like you can ignore the market like in your research, well, the market is going to hit you with a baseball bat once you actually try and release that 2D platformer on Steam and two people will buy it and one of them will leave a bad review and you will start questioning your entire game dev career. 
you should be making multiple games and you should accept that, hey, those games aren't really great. Don't make like shovelware asset flips, but also realize and allow yourself to not make perfection from the first go. A lot of people, they look at us and they're like, oh my God, why should I listen to this guy with his white shirt and his dumb face who has only made one game that barely grows 10K? Well, the reason is because you probably have just been doing research and looking at all the Chris Sikowski articles about making the ideal game, but you've never actually tried to take that plunge and make that first game. And it's fine. It's not going to be the end of your world if you do make that first game and it's not going to be a success. It's going to be the start of making more successful games down the road. So really don't feel bad that your first games won't be successful, that you feel like you're not ready to be a pro game developer. Nobody really is for the first game that they make. It's something that you just need to learn along the way. So I hope this is a video that you learned a bit of. I was kind of scared making this video to be honest because man, the comments on that video are very spicy and I feel like if I contradict anything in there, they're gonna eat me alive. Maybe at this point I am already eaten alive, I don't know, but I think I just want to really say this. You have my permission to make games and you have my permission to make games that the first ones you're gonna make aren't gonna be great. But as long as you keep learning from it and you keep improving, how do I do my market research? You'll learn these things just by failing a bunch of times along the way. That's going to be the best way to learn because I can tell you all of these things, but until you experience them yourself, like all of the things that go wrong in development, that's when you really learn them yourself. I can tell you them, but you won't understand them until you've gone through the process yourself. Anyways, that's all I have to say. If you're new here, we're game developers. We make two videos every week talking about the progress on our own games, the things that we learn from being game developers and just random thoughts and ramblings I have about game development. So if that is something that you're interested in, be sure to head down below and subscribe as it really helps us out. And in exchange, you get these videos twice a week. I think it's a pretty good win-win for both of us. That's all I need to say. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.